We're here at the DeLand Sport Aviation Showcase. This is the first year of this event and it's looking pretty good. And we saw an airplane here that we saw at Oshkosh earlier, but we wanted to come by and have another look at it. I'm Dan Johnson and I'm talking to Bulat. Correct. And um, formerly from Russia, but now living here in the United States. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, almost six years. And it's a Russian airplane. Well, that's correct, uh, but this airplane was built uh, here in the United States from the Russian built kit, from the quick built kit. Okay, you built it here, but uh, the, the Russian company, which is Spectre or just yeah. SP, yeah, um, and that's the name of the company, and they build the kit. Now, we're going to go behind the airplane and have a look at the kit, but let's just talk a little bit about, uh, tell me some basic things about the construction of the airplane and uh, what its capabilities are, if you would, Bulat. I see. So the, actually, uh, the the people mostly came and asking me what kind of aircraft is this. They say that it looks like a Zenith 701. Yeah, but the people who built before Zenith 701, they said, "Oh no, it's not Zenith because uh, they can see the differences." Yeah, a lot of differences here. Yeah, that's um, the fuselage is more rumor. Yeah and it has a barrel skins yeah, for more stronger. You're talking about these uh, little bumps back here? Correct. Yes, okay, yeah, which, gives the, which gives that portion yeah. a little more rigidity, is that correct? correct? Yeah. Okay. The controls uh, are on this airplane is push-pull tubes. It's not cables. Okay, cables and a center and joystick, I see. Correct. Yeah, but uh, the customer can also order this uh, you can have dual sticks. joysticks. Yeah, yeah, okay, does. it is a kit-built airplane, so you can build it as you like, basically. Yeah, it is not a light sport aircraft. You've not gone no, to that no, level no, of no, approval. No. It's a okay. home-built aircraft, yeah. Okay. Or and we're in Russia. Not that Americans know every city in Russia. All we know is Moscow yeah, and a couple yeah, of other the people well, say it's Moscow and St. Petersburg. I say it, yes, Moscow or St. Petersburg. <laughs> <laughs> and that matter because the people don't know. That's the only know. ones yeah, they know anyway. Yeah, they know. But is the it near cities, either one of those? Uh, no, it's uh, from the south of Moscow. It's about no, 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 t thousand, yeah, thousand miles away from Moscow oh, to wow, the south. Okay. Yes, it's city is Taganrog. So yeah. Mr. Putin doesn't come by and visit the factory. <laughs> no, never, I <laughs> <Okay>. believe. <laughs> Maybe that's just as well. Okay, so it's an interesting-looking airplane. Is another place I'm feeling the uh, door panel here and. Well, that's composite or something. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's not the same as a Zenith airplane, so that part's different. Yeah. Oh, and a nice little latch up here. That's a that's yeah. a simple but interesting little feature. Yeah. And a little extra window down here for better landing visibility, yeah, I presume. Yeah, bubbled. Oh, and it's bubbled out. Okay, yeah. that's like the 750 then, that part yeah. of it. But Has a wind. <laughs> it's quite a nice looking, uh, yeah, in the air scoop and so mm -hmm. forth. It's quite a nice looking airplane. It has the uh, fixed position uh, slats on it and uh, also the uh, drop-down uh, ailerons you can see in the background there. So, uh, and which engine are you using? I saw a couple on your sign here, but what are you? What uh, are you yeah, right now installed Viking engine because- uh, This one has Viking yeah, in it? Okay. Yeah, previously I bought the Viking engine 110 from the Jan Engenfellner. Okay. Yeah, and I built it with the Viking. But the factory mostly uh, build the firewall forward uh, installation for Rotax 912. Okay, all right. So mostly, mostly 912. Mostly 912. But you can install the Viking if you like, Correct. as you did here. Correct. And uh, are you able to support these builders from here? You personally? Yeah, we block? can do it. Yes. Okay. Yes. No problem. Okay. Well, let's walk around behind the airplane and have a look at the detail of when it's not all together like this one. Yeah. So we've come around to the back of the finished airplane we were just looking at here, and Bulat's going to tell us a little bit about some of the component parts we're looking here, but it's a kit, it's not an LSA, so this is how you would buy it. Now, you said, well, after I built one, I can sell you that one, yep. and that has a pretty good price on it, Correct. Um, and that's great, so people that want to save some money, there's an option for you, but, you know, a lot of people are builders and like the idea of building, of course, and that's wonderful. So. Tell me a little bit about the component parts here, and then we'll touch on the price of those parts. Okay. So what are we looking at? Well, let's, let's start up here with what's underneath the airplane. Well, what, what component parts uh, do we have here? Yeah, there's uh, almost done stabilizer and vertical. That that's mean everything. So that's sort of impedance. that's the whole tailplane, right yeah, there. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Uh, th these down here are the uh, horizontal stabilizers. Yeah. Okay. That's everything is down right now with me. So. 
Okay, and that's delivered that way to yeah, you, which as you look at it, you can see, well, it's, it's component parts, but there's not much to put together. This is not a pile of metal bits. This is yeah, correct. Par airplane parts. Yeah, already. just bolt in, screw it to your airplane, and it's almost done. Okay, and now we're looking at the fuselage here, which looks to me to be, uh, you know, almost done. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but the factory. You were telling me a little bit about the uh, the factory quick build, and I was looking down here, and I went, oh well, these are these are bucked rivets down here. These are not pop rivets. Yeah, correct. Now that's yeah. that's a much different operation than a pop uh, pop rivet is. Yeah, correct. And the factory is doing all that. You said. Yeah, that, that's true. That's everything done on a factory. So the heart made uh, parts that's built in factory. Yeah, the most difficult things for a home builder to do. So. So with, with, if it comes into you this way, um, not including paint and some of the other finish work that you can spend quite a bit of time doing, yeah. but you said you can build this, or maybe you with special skills, but anybody with some experience can build this quick build kit pretty fast. Yeah. How long? Yeah, I believe, uh, I say to you maybe one week, um, but no, it's maybe one month only if you will do it every day. Yeah. That's still pretty fast. Yeah. Get a kit like this, build it up in a month. Yeah. That's pretty fast. And what does the kit cost? Now, folks, when we talk about price, understand you may see this video years after we've made it. Prices change. We're going to give you a contact information later. But today, uh, at the end of 2016, what is this? What does yeah. a full kit, not quick build, cost? Yeah, that's depend what kind of parts you're buying from uh, the factory. And also, I will say you just only factory price. If you will ask me how much does it cost? Well, here, yes. We're, here? we're talking about in the okay, United States. I will tell you, this is uh, $30,000 even. You just need to put engine, propeller, uh, tires, and wheels, tires and wheels, and uh, maybe straps. Yeah, if you want. Yeah, that's, uh, and, that's instruments, that's and instruments. And paint. Instruments and paint. Or unpaint. Well, true. Yeah. You don't have to it's paint them. To you, yeah. And paint adds a lot of weight, so and it takes a skill, so you don't have that, to do that. But you have to be ready to do some polishing then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and if it's a quick build, uh, how much would that add to the cost? Thirty thousand. Oh, that is yeah, the quick build. I oh, okay, yeah. I misunderstood. Yeah. Okay, so that and you said uh, you know this maybe this one right here if somebody wanted it, uh, sixty some thousand dollars. Sixty five thousand. Ready to fly to register in air, air warfare. And uh, in an experimental amateur built kit. Yeah, I'm I mean, well, it, it was a kit and yeah, you yeah. built it. Yeah. And then, of course, like any other kit, you can sell it. Yeah. So, there's a ways to get some more information or some, some uh, knowledge about this particular SP airplane from Russia. We don't see too many airplanes from Russia. We had a couple in the past, but it's not common. And although it looks very much like the Zenith, we see there are several differences about it. Uh, the tail we were talking about is significantly larger. It's not a full flying tail. It's a, the forward portion is a fixed a vertical stabilizer with a conventional rudder on it. And so there are some differences to it that the company in Russia, SPE Spectre, has been uh, changing over the years. How yeah. long have they been in business? Well, the As making these kits, that is. The factory building, I believe it's about maybe 13 or 14 years. Okay, and yeah. uh, how many of them are flying? All, at about 200 oh, worldwide. Okay. okay. Yeah. So they've had a pretty good run of it, and uh, now we're seeing more of them in America. So, uh, Bulat, how do we get a hold of you in the USA? You said that you don't have a web address, but you got uh, a phone uh, number. Yeah, my cell phone number is 786 340 9486. Okay, very good. Yeah, so we'll, thank you. we'll look to have more information about many airplanes of this type. You can find all kinds of affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Bulat and myself here at DeLand. Thank you.